Hi, I'm Dave Sweet from Emerson Swan, and thank you for joining us today to talk about the new Takeo Zone Controls. The new Takeo Zone Controls, really, they put in a lot of effort to make these better. They did a big voice of customer. They went out there, tried to figure out for contractors, you know, how could these be better? They're extremely successful, but how could they even be better? So what Takeo has done is they've actually consolidate the SKUs on these. Originally there were 15 model numbers in the zone control family and now they're reducing them down to nine. How are they doing that? They're basically taking the Dash EXP features and integrated into a standard unit. So now I don't have to buy anything fancy. I just buy a standard unit and I get all those features of a Dash EXP. We'll kind of review what those features are but easily to do that and they added some cool things at the end. So we did some nice things to refresh, to make it better for the installer, but added some cool things to you on there. Something easy as the cover removal. The cover on the unit now just hinges and comes right off into your hand. Also made an improvement by giving you some places to right where uh, your zones are. You can label it right here with a Sharpie or a label maker right next to the lights instead of writing it on the angle of a cover or sticking it on a board somewhere and it may get lost. Now you just cleans up that whole application. More diagnostic lights on here so we can see not only is our power connected and what zones are calling, but hey, is the boiler engaged? Am I doing domestic priority? Am I running a tankless coil? Am I doing a primary pump? All these things you can now see without removing the cover on there. Also on a sidebar, they made it clear all kinds of electrical knockouts. You know, some guy said the cover didn't always fit if I used this weird connector. Well, engineering has corrected all that and the covers now fit and will not interfere with any of those electrical connectors out there. So let's look at switching relays and talk about that family first and what's changed on there. What they've done for enhancements are they took all those features of the Dash EXP, as we said, and they integrated into here, being post purge, pump exercise, priority protection, switchable primary circulator, two boiler end switches, the ability to daisy chain multiple panels together. You get all that in the base unit. So kind of discount that on the side. Really nothing new on there, so we just made it standard for you. What else? What would knockouts in the back of it? If you're on a high-end job and you want to have that all your wires hidden and going out through a board mounted on the wall, we can do that. Obviously, we still have the top and the bottom knockouts for most jobs, but those few that you want to make it really look clean, you have the option for doing that. Two boiler end switches on here, so we can always enable, if we're working with a ModCon boiler or a boiler that has two domestic or, or two distinct inputs, one for space seating, one say for domestic on there. Transformers are actually replaceable. The older version we're riveted in, the new versions just have a simple screw. We can take it out, replace it. If we're on a job where we need a lot of smart or communicating thermostats, you have the option to plug in another one, plugs right into there. You can add another transformer. There's also give you R, W, and C for every thermostat connection to make it that much easier. Outputs, clearly labeled, markings on there. What else has changed on there? The communication between the two controls. If I was on a job and I did need two panels to talk together, it's changed slightly. It's gone to a mod bus. No sense really diving down into that, but it just gives it a lot more flexibility in talking to other equipment in the mechanical room or other panels out there and you also have domestic research as an option. Basically, the cost of a thermistor, one sensor, I could wire it into here and assign one of those unused aux outputs to run my domestic research circulator. So again, making life easier. You're handling your space heating, you're handling your domestic generation, why not have the ability to handle that domestic recirculation on there? As we talked about, it can support just about any kind of boiler out there, ModCon, Cold Start, tankless coil, air to water heat pump, geothermal. Yeah, so it has the ability to do heating and cooling as well. On there, we talked about the lights in the front, more of that available. One of the biggest things they did is increase the space down on here for your wiring. 
I call wire management, they just made it much better. They gave you more space, more ground screws, much easier to bring in thicker wires and wire into those terminal blocks. Let's just take an example here. Maybe in this, I have five zones of space heating and an indirect water heater with its own dedicated circulator. Here's how I'd wire it up. All the instruction sheets, the wiring guides, everything related to here always shows you that application drawing right next to the electrical. So there's no guesswork. Hey, this is exactly how I piped it. I know I'm gonna, how I'm gonna wire it up. So again, taking it that much further for you to give you the information you need to wire it up. So in wiring it up, straightforward, just like the older models we're used to. Our thermostats connect on the top. We'll wire those into there. Indirect water heater goes on our priority zone. If we're gonna use priority in the panel, line voltage circulators wire down on the bottom. Your end switches to your boiler, whether it's a cold start boiler or a modulating condensing, we can use one or both of those end switches on there. And just your line voltage input down on the bottom. Straightforward, hot and neutral for that. And of course, the ability to run that domestic recirculation pump right there. Well, changing gears a little bit here, let's look at the zone valve controls. Basically, the zone valve controls had all the same improvements that we just talked about on there, so I don't really need to rehash the knockouts in the back, the replaceable transformers, all the features of a Dash EXP. You have all that, the more lights. But what's different about a zone valve control over a switching relay is your zones, your outputs are 24 volts now instead of line voltage but you still have up to three line voltage outputs for circulators or other devices. Could it be ventilation in a mechanical room or primary pump or that priority circulator for your indirect? All that is capable right into here. On the three and the four, as with before, you have 140 VA transformer. On the five and six zone for zone valves, you have 240 VA transformers on there. The old way of wiring the line voltage was a slightly cumbersome, but you got there. You had the ability to do it. This would be an example of wiring, say I had three pumps into an older model. I had to bring power into it, I had to do jumpers, run each one, and then bring power to the transformer. On the new version, so much easier. Oh my gosh, you just bring power into the hot neutral and you have three line voltage outputs ready to go if I want to use them or not. So again, we talked about that at the beginning, that voice of customer. A lot of these features came from that. Looking at applications like we did on the switching relay, I have five zones of space heating with a single circulator and those zone valves and a circulator on my rack. So a total of six zones. This is how I'd wire it up. I would have my five space heating zone valves here, my priority circulator, and my zone valve circulator. And obviously my thermostats mounted on the top. So basically just what we covered on before. Thermostats and indirect, those are your low voltage inputs up on the top. Our 24 volt outputs to our zone valves. Wire in your end switch to your heat generation equipment. And then if I'm going to use a circulator like the diagram here on that priority zone, you got to remember to jumper three and four. It's in the instruction sheet several places, but just like to reiterate that way, when this indirect water heater calls, it instantly turns on the circulator. There's no time delay on there. So, and again, for wiring on a line voltage side, bring your hot neutral into it. We'll have our zone valve, our space heating circulator, and then we have our priority circulator. Again, straightforward wiring on there, just goes right into the panel. We have the option to control that third pump. This could be a domestic research pump, it could be a primary pump. You have a lot of options for doing, say, that third circulator on there. So we just covered a lot of features. We just threw out here all these improvements and enhancement, and it's great. Been well received, been out for several months, everybody loves it. But one thing we don't really talk about are some of the advanced features. And so I'm just gonna highlight a few features right now that are totally optional. The control, you can take it out of the box and it's gonna work on just about all your jobs. But some people push the limit of applications. Hey, I needed a rib relay or I needed this zone to do something a little differently. Well, these new zone controls can handle it. It would be the multi-zones, only the two through six on circulators and three through six on the zone valves, but all those multi-zone products, what do they have? They have Bluetooth built into it, and you can download for free a mobile app. 
So at no cost to you, I can actually get in there and configure that control and make it work for my job. I call it a configuration tool. We'll use that to commission that tool. So it's called Takeo Control is the name of that mobile app out there. Download it, whether you're iOS or Android. It's a configuration tool. I don't need Wi-Fi. I don't need cellular service in the mechanical room. I'm talking Bluetooth between my mobile device and the control, but I can do over-the-air updates. Well, first of all, relax. You don't have to do an over-the-air update. It's not like buying a new TV where you have to run through all the updates. This is totally optional. If Takeo comes out with the features you want, I can upgrade that control, but out of the box, it does every feature we just talked about and works well. So you don't have to, only we just say it makes it never obsolete, this control, once it gets installed. Just think about it, if you're a service organization and you show up on a job, I can actually name the zone panel and tell me where it's located. Oh, I got one in the crawl space. Hey, I have one in the mechanical room and I got one in the closet in the master bathroom. I know exactly where those panels are and how to get to them. I can also name the zones, kitchen, master bath, living room, great room, whatever it is. Any service guy that shows up, he not only knows where the panels are, he knows where those zones are and how they're controlling and what's going on with them. We could do some other things. Uh, we'd have to spend a little bit more time to dive down in here, but the idea is these products are very versatile. We can adjust whether it's just some names or we can dive down into some functionality of the control and see and change how some of those operations work. So, I hope you enjoyed this little presentation on the Takeo zone controls and their functionality. Any other questions, please reach out to your local Emerson Swan sales reps and they can help you on that.